On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. I need thee. Yeah. Every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now. Thank you, Lord. My Savior, I come to, to the honey, hallelujah, the old Lord, I need thee, Lord. Yeah. Every hour I I need thee Oh bless me now hallelujah my Savior, I come to, to Thee, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, let Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we come asking that you forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive them that have trespassed us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that which is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Father, here we are today asking in the name of Jesus that you forgive us right now as individuals, forgive us as a church and a body of believers. And God, I ask you now personally as your spokesman that you forgive me right now of any sins I may have committed, anything that would disqualify me from delivering the word on today, I come asking thee to forgive me now in the name of Jesus. Let me not stand before these thy people in hypocrisy. But Lord, search my heart, my mind, and my soul. Anything that's not like you, you take it out and take control right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be acceptable and I say, Lord, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, let all God's people say amen and amen. Truly want to thank God, amen, and praise the Lord for amen another day. Amen, praise the Lord that the Lord has made and I am determined that I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. I truly want to thank you all, um, my amen viewers by Facebook and by YouTube. I want to thank you all. Amen. Praise the Lord for your continual support of the ministry. And I ask, amen, praise the Lord as I stand before you today that, amen, you pray with me. Is that all right? And pray for me. We've been talking from the book of Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, and also from James 1, verse 22 through 24. So we want to begin where we left off at. So you all that wasn't with us in the prior Sundays, uh, turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, amen, praise the Lord, the 13th chapter. Amen. Jeremiah 13, amen, praise the Lord. And then go to James, amen, the first chapter, Jeremiah 13, and also James, the first chapter. You'll find, amen, praise the Lord, amen, that the Bible is still relevant today. The Bible declares that there's nothing new under the sun. And so in James, the first chapter, amen, praise the Lord, beginning at the 22nd verse, 
He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. I'm going to read it again. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving who? Your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. He's like a man that goes to the mirror and looks in the mirror. And for he beholdeth himself, and then he walks away from the mirror. He goes away and straightway forgetteth what he looks like, forgetteth what man of man he was. And so, amen, that's where the crust of the theme, my subject is coming from. Lord, help me. I forgot what I looked like. How many of you all has forgotten what you look like? Amen. Then in Jeremiah, amen, praise the Lord, the 13th chapter. 1 through the 15th verse, we've been talking about that. This is a time when Jeremiah was instructed by the Lord, amen, to go get a girdle, amen, and praise a linen girdle, amen, to put it upon his loins and don't wash it, don't put it in the wash machine, amen. And so we know that the prophet did what the Lord had asked him to do. He went and got the girdle, amen, and praise the Lord according to the word of the Lord and put it on his loins, Amen. And he took the girdle, amen, and praise the Lord that God had instructed him to do. And then the Lord told him to take it down to the Euphrates River, dig a hole, hide it there among the rocks. He did that. And then the Lord, amen, praise the Lord, he instructed him to go back to get that girdle. So we're talking about the girdle, amen, of the Lord. And I want you to know the girdle represents the servants of the Lord. The, the girdle represents us that have been born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as we, amen, praise the Lord, has found out, amen, that uh, the, it symbolized, amen, the condition and the relationship that the people had with God. And so this girdle had become soiled. Have your relationship with the Lord become soiled? This girdle had become marred. You got to do a self-examination and ask yourself, have your relationship become marred with the Lord? To the point, amen, praise the Lord, that the people had a formalism. They developed a formalism. I spoke on last Sunday to let you know that you need to be aware, amen, of formalism. Amen. They had a form of godliness, but they were denying the power thereof. Amen. And so we want to continue with that. We talked about on last Sunday, amen, about the Pharisees and the Phariseeism. A lot of folks in the church, amen, praise the Lord, falls under Phariseeism. What is Phariseeism? I'm glad you asked. Phariseeism is a rigid observance of external form of religion. Amen. Without genuine piety, amen, it is hypocrisy and religion. Amen. It's a self-righteous spirit. It matters of moral and manner. Amen. And so here we find, amen, praise the Lord, that the children of Israel had a formalism. They was like the Phariseeism. They had an observance of the external form of religion. Outwardly, they looked all right, but inwardly, they had an issue. God had an issue. And do you not know there's a passage of scripture that talks about how we clean the outside of the cup while the inside of the cup is dirty. I was taught as a young boy grown up in the church, amen, that righteousness starts on the inside and it works its way out. Is that all right? Amen. And so here, amen, praise the Lord. We find, amen, praise the Lord in the seventh verse of the 13th chapter of Jeremiah, the girl was marred it was profitable for nothing and when you amen start having a form of godliness amen praise the lord and you fall into the fearism amen praise the lord we become unprofitable to god we become in other words good for nothing is that all right amen praise the lord so here the servants the believers of god may be lovers of lost souls these lovers of them that have not got saved and who sacrifices life praying and sacrifices life fasting and giving he cleaves to the Lord, enjoying the covenant blessings, amen, praise the Lord. But deep inside, he still holds on to secret sins. Are any of you all out there today holding on to secret sins, besetting lusts, and, keep, and then it keeps him falling back into the temptation that he never seems able to overcome, amen. And I, look, I, I want you to look at this particular Amen. In Psalms 90 and 8. Amen. I'm going to take my time and talk for a little bit. In Psalms, the 90th 
amen, praise the Lord, the vision of Psalms, amen, praise the Lord. We find it's written, amen, praise the Lord, in Psalms 90, amen, and 8, amen. And thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so go to Psalms 19 and 12. Amen. I'm just talking to the church today. Jeremiah was dealing with the church. Jeremiah was dealing with the, amen, children of God. And in Psalms 19, verse 12, it says, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. How many of y'all know some of us don't only have secret sins, we have some secret faults. And so uh, if you look, if you are looking for a particular type of sin, but all, amen, secret sin refers to those sins that an individual thinks, amen, that, amen, nobody knows about. When you talk about secret sin, it refers to those sins an individual does not think, amen, amen, that he thinks that no one else knows. But I always say there's nothing hidden from God, amen. And so we have placed our iniquity before God and our secret sins Amen. Praise the Lord. In the presence of God, it's like a light bulb. You can't hide it. And so, of course, no sin is truly secret. I don't care how you, it may be secret to man, but it's not secret to God. And so we find the children of Israel in the book of Jeremiah having some issues. Anybody here today having some issues? Amen. And God, God got to the point, amen, praise the Lord, that he wanted them to understand where they stood at in light of his word, where they stood at in light of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, amen. Truly, like I said, again, no sin is truly secret because at a minimum, God is aware of all that we do. The Bible describes in Luke, the 12th chapter. Can I take my time and keep talking? In Luke, the 12th chapter, in the second, amen, in the second verse, Luke 12 and 2, the Bible says here, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. That, amen, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Amen. Praise the Lord. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear in closets, amen, in a private room shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. I said it before, I say it again. God can see a black ant on a black rock at midnight. There is nothing that is hid from the Lord. In 1 Corinthians, amen, the fourth chapter, I'm just giving you the prelude to where we're going. Therefore, amen, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the heart. God knows the heart. <clears throat> Amen. And he's going to bring the light that came and manifest the counsel of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. Amen. So, amen. So God don't want us to judge anything before the time until the Lord comes who will bring both to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. So some sins are secret because we refuse to acknowledge them. Amen. We hide them from everyone, including ourselves. Amen. But God, amen, can discern the errors of our ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. And how many of y'all know we all need to be acquitted, amen, of our hidden faults? And so in Ezekiel, amen, 8 and 12, amen, I love this. In Ezekiel, the 8th chapter, Ezekiel 8, verse 12, we find written here, amen, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Then he said to me, amen, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Son of man, thou hast seen what the ancient of the house of Israel do in the dark. Every man in his chamber of his imaginary. Amen. For they say the Lord sees or not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. The nerves and the audacity think that God don't see them. And so they were the ancients of the house of the Israel. They were the elders, not just anybody. The ancients speak of the elders. They were the elders of the house of Israel. Amen. And, amen. And so this, amen. He says, son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel have done in the dark? Amen. Every man is in his room with uh, his idol. Every man is in his chamber. The chamber represents the bedroom. Everyone is in the bedroom doing what 
what they want to do and thinking they can hide from God. And talking about the Lord does not see us. How dare them to think God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time and in the same place. Can't get somebody to say amen. And so there is nothing new that thy, thy sin is not secret. The eyes of God has seen it and thou has sinned before his face. And Israel was in the book of Jeremiah was in a place, amen, praise the Lord, where God was fed up with their idol worship. God was fed up with the lip service, honoring him with the lips, but the heart was removed from him. Can you say amen? And so thou hast shut the doors and drawn the curtains. That's what they have. That's what the, that's happening. Amen. And kept out the eyes of the sun. But God eyes pierced through the darkness, the brick walls. Amen. Praise the Lord. Which surround thee were uh, were as transparent as glasses to the eyes of the Almighty. The darkness which did grind. Amen. Gird thee as the bright as a summer noon in the eyes of God who beholdeth all things. The Bible declares that in Hebrews four verse thing that. Knowest thou not, O man, that all all that all things are naked and open to the eyes of God with whom we have to do business with? Is that all right? So he cries out day by day, Lord, I'm sorry. Have you ever found yourself there? You cry out day by day, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Don't let me die in my sins. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know how weak I am, how easy this lust spirit overcomes me. Y'all kick up a shot. His sins and confession, he sins and then he confess again, but he never ever able to go to the level. What level are you talking about? That lever, amen, he never allows himself. That lever is that, amen, that large basin that was used in ceremonial oblation or used in ceremonial cleansing in the ancient Jewish tabernacle, amen. And we're never able to get to that lever. He, we're never able to allow God himself to truly cleanse us. And that's why David, after David was caught in his mess. David thought he had hidden sins. That's why he wrote about those secret sins because he writes in uh, Psalms 51 amen praise the Lord. He praised the prayer after Nathan came to him and he was exposed how many times? Sometimes y'all know that sometimes we won't repent until we're exposed. I can't get nobody to help me. And so David after he was exposed his sins was made known that they were not hidden from God. He pins Psalms 51. Have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness according to thy multitude of tender mercy I need you to blot out I need you to erase my transgressions uh -huh. wash me how many y'all know we need to be washed in the blood of the lamb he said wash me not just wash me anyway but wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me not from some but cleanse me from all my sins amen he comes on boys of Shando. he come on and say I acknowledge my wrong the problem with us in the church is we don't want to acknowledge when we're wrong. We don't want to acknowledge when we have transgressed the word of God. He said, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sins, amen, praise the Lord, are ever before thee and against thee and the only have I sinned, amen, praise the Lord. And so we find here that a man praise the Lord David realized a man praise the Lord that he was not allowed to free himself and how many y'all know we can't free ourselves I'm going to get back to Jeremiah 13 in a few minutes a man praise the Lord but it's just like a, a pastor who appears to be holy I can't get anybody help me a man appears as one who prays a man for hours on end sitting up half the night interceding on behalf of others his conversations are always been full of Jesus everything he opened Every time he opens his mouth, it's about Jesus, but he was never delivered from those strongholds. Come by my child. And how y'all know we all have some strongholds that we need God to break every fetter. The songwriter said, Jesus breaks every fetter. Amen. And do you not know we have folks in the pulpit? We have folks on the usher board. We have folks in the choir that seem like they can never get delivered from those strongholds. Can I keep talking here? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's those strongholds that will ruin our life. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why when folks indulge, amen, praise the Lord, in sexual promiscuity outside the, the bonds of marriage, they find it hard to pull away from Johnny. They find it hard to pull away from Sally. I can't keep telling Shando. Hallelujah. Because that stronghold, amen, praise the Lord. I'm not going to go down that right now. Amen, praise the Lord. But this has been the third, amen, praise. Sometimes it becomes the third episode in our life. We keep going back and forth, back and forth because we're never able to get free from those strongholds. 
And so we find ourselves falling into the same sin every few months, every few days, every few years. We find ourselves falling into the same sin. Look at the children of Israel that Jeremiah had to deal with. They was wishy-washy. One day they loved the Lord. The next day they don't love the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as long, amen, praise the Lord, as we appear to be holy and a prayer warrior, amen, praise the Lord, and not be honest with ourselves, we're never able, amen, praise the Lord, to be delivered from those strongholds. So next we find Jeremiah was commanded. Jeremiah was commanded in Jeremiah the 13th chapter. He was commanded to wear that dirty girdle on a long uh, journey to the Euphrates River. Amen. Praise the Lord. The journey will cover 250 miles. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we find that, amen, amen, God told him in the fourth verse of Jeremiah 13, I need you to take that girdle. I need you to go down to the freight through rivers and hide it there in a hole of the rock. And so some, amen, praise the Lord. We find, amen, praise the Lord, that nobody would actually travel that distance on foot just to bury a girdle. Amen. It had to be something that God wanted people, to, the children of Israel, to take notice of. Amen. Praise the Lord. That showed the long suffering of God. Do you not know that God is long suffering, not willing that any man should perish? Amen. But I believe the trip was real because God had a powerful truth that he wanted to convey to the children of Israel. Can I keep talking here? And you see, Jeremiah was well known and he was respected throughout Israel. He was respected throughout Judah and he was admired even among the surrounding nation. Foreign kings acknowledged God was in Jeremiah. Is that all right? And now by his walking, the distance to the Euphrates River, every village along the way, amen, praise the Lord, will see the famous girl, amen, praise the Lord. Uh -huh, the trip would take weeks. It would, uh, it would set, amen, every town on bus as Jeremiah passed through, amen. Everyone would want a glimpse of this dirty girdle because they were speculating, what is God saying to us, amen? And do you not know, amen, praise the Lord, God has a way of using illustrations to get our attention, amen. Man. And so, yet, what probably was most puzzling to the children of Israel, to the people of God, was Jeremiah's destination. Look about how. See, the Euphrates River, amen, the Euphrates River, everyone knew the Hebrew word Euphrates meant, amen, river of fruitfulness. I can't get nobody to help me. So why would God allow a man of God to take something filthy, to say, take something dirty to a river of fruitfulness? Amen. Praise the Lord. In other words, God wanted them to let them, God wanted to let them know that their they weren't as fruitful as they thought they were. They had become tainted. They had become marred. Amen. They all would have asked themselves, why would Jeremiah be taking a dirty soil girl to a place of fruitfulness? It's unlawful, full of stench. Why does he just cast it off and burn it? Because the unclean, oh Lord, I want to keep talking here. Because the unclean cannot be fruitful. And do you not know, amen, praise the Lord, when your relationship with God become a stench, when your relationship with God become unclean, when your relationship with God becomes soiled, amen, praise the Lord, because you don't want to deal with the strongholds in your life. You, in essence, become unfruitful, amen, uh-huh. And so what does it mean, amen, praise the Lord, huh? that people appeared to be fruitful, but God was showing them they weren't fruitful, having a form of God. Godliness. Uh -huh. Second Timothy three. Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? Having a form of godliness, huh? but denying the power thereof. Huh? And that's what we have in the churches today. Huh? The church is full of people huh? that have a form of godliness. Huh? They know how to roll their R's. They know how to get in their homiletics. Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? And so, oh Lord, let me keep teaching him. Huh? And so in first in Second Timothy three one through five. Now, but know this that in the last days perilous times will come now, for men will be lovers of themselves now, lovers of money boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy unloving and unforgiving now, they will become slanders without any self-control uh -huh. brutal despisers of good traitors and headstrong amen now halting and lovers of pleasure more and rather than being lovers of God, huh? having a form of godliness, huh? but denying the power thereof. Huh? Oh, glory to God. Huh? And the church world is full of people. Y'all don't like me up in here. Huh? That has a form of godliness. <clears throat> 
They wear their skirts down to the ankle. They come in here with a clerical collar. They come in here with a two and three piece suit as if they holier than thou having a form of godliness. Huh? But deep seated strongholds, y'all don't light me up in here. And so Paul states that the people who were involved in these list of sins as had held their head was a form of godliness. Uh, there's something wrong when a man of God, a pastor, professed to be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, is out, amen, every Saturday night, tiptoeing through the tulips. Uh, something is wrong, amen, uh, because they never got rid in Elba Shando uh, and delivered from those strongholds. Can I keep teaching here? Uh, and so the Paul states that the people who are involved uh, in the list <coughs> of those sins, amen, uh, are having a form of godliness, uh, but deny the power thereof. Uh, the word form can be translated as appearance, amen. Uh, and we can come to church and appear to be ever so holy. Can I preach up in here? Uh, we can appear to be ever so holy and have it all together. Uh, but deep-seated secret sins, amen. Uh, and so God told Jeremiah, uh, the people of God, uh, praise the Lord, uh, has become unclean uh, and they're no longer fruitful, amen. Uh, I need to know, amen, uh, have you become unfruitful? Uh, what has tainted your relationship with God? Uh, can I keep talking up in here? These people, amen, praise the Lord, huh? they appear to be godly, amen, huh? but they do not allow true salvation to ever take place. Huh? The Bible, how do those shop? Huh? The Bible declares in 2 Corinthians huh? 5, verse 17, huh? that if any man, amen, therefore if any man be in Christ, huh? he is a new creature. Huh? All things are passed away, huh? and behold, all things become new. Huh? But something was wrong with Judah. Huh? Something was wrong with Israel. Huh? Uh -huh. They found themselves a man. Huh? They kept regurgitating back to the old nature. Huh? They kept regurgitating back to idol worship. Huh? Something was wrong, hallelujah, huh? with the children of Israel. Huh? And so Jeremiah, God was called. Huh? He called on Jeremiah to illustrate <coughs> how the children of Israel Amen. Relationship huh, had become unclean huh, and thus caused them to be unfruitful. Now, uh -huh, uh, yes. Huh, and so there's people that appear to be godly, huh, but they did not allow true salvation huh, to have a powerful influence in their life. Huh. We in Lord knows huh, that when I came to Jesus huh, 38 years ago, huh, a former atheist and agnostic, a man, huh, did not believe in God, did not believe in heaven or hell. When I came to Jesus, hallelujah, I want you to understand, first of all, that I was not looking for Jesus. I was not seeking Jesus. Can I talk about myself? I was minding my own business, celebrating my own birthday. Can I keep preaching up in here when I had a visitation from God? Thank you, Holy Ghost. All that God wanted to know was that night, which way I wanted to go here heaven or hell. I thank your Holy Ghost. Amen. But one thing I can tell you this much that when Jesus came into my life all things passed away and behold all things became new. Amen. The desires I had before I came to Jesus started falling off of me now. Can I keep preaching here? And so let me go to Acts 9. Oh, Shandam. Acts the 5th chapter 1 through 11 is it a notable example of people that appear to be holy, people that appear to be godly. We find Ananias and Sapphira, they had the appearance of godliness. They had the appearance of wanting to, amen, praise the Lord, to advance the kingdom of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But they yet, no, Shandum, but yet down on the inside, they had not been delivered from the stronghold. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, of greed, amen. Uh, and so when they went and sold the land, amen, uh, for a certain particular amount of money, uh, they started looking at all that green money. Uh, they started looking at how much their land was worth. Uh, and then they came to church 
Thinking they were lying to the preacher. Uh, thinking they were lying to the pastor. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, and we got folk that come to church today. Uh, thinking they lying to me. Amen. Uh, but they're not lying to me. They lying to the Holy Ghost. Uh, I can't get nobody to help me. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, thank you Lord. Uh, and so Peter said to Ananias. Uh, Why uh, has Satan filled thy heart uh, to lie to the Holy Ghost? Uh, see they thought they were lying to pastor. Peter, but they were lying to the Holy Ghost. Y'all know how y'all come to church and y'all think you're lying to me, amen, but you're lying to the Holy Ghost in me. I can't get nobody to help me. And so Peter asked Ananias, why has Satan filled the heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part of the price of the land? I just need to know, brother Ananias, while it was yours, it was not in thy own power to do what you wanted to do man after you sold it was it not in your own power to keep all that you sold it for why have thou conceived this thing in your heart that thou have not lied unto men but you have lied unto the Holy Ghost our glory to God and so we got to understand and Ananias never got delivered from the stronghold called greed and not only did he not get delivered he convinced his wife Sophia to go along with him and here she come to church three hours later. Now, y'all know how y'all come to church. Some y'all go to church three or four hours later. And out in the Boshundum. And so Ananias, after he heard the words, the Bible said he fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear fell upon them in the church. The young men rose up and wound a man, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. In about a space of three hours, here come his wife, a man, with a big Kojic hat on, a man. Oh, glory to God. Not knowing what was done, a man. And then Peter said, Tell me, my sister. District missionary, uh, amen. Evangelist and uh, Sophia's, uh, tell me you sold the land for so much, uh, and she said yes, so so much. Uh, and how I need to understand uh, how is that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Uh, behold, the feet of them that buried your husband, uh, they're at the door to carry you away as well. Uh, they had a form uh, of holiness and godliness. Uh, they had a form of commitment, amen. Uh, but they denied the power to be delivered. Uh, they, if they had allowed the power of influence of godliness uh, to work in their life, amen, uh, they would not have been dishonest, amen. Uh, and we got folks that are dishonest in the pulpit. Uh, folks are dishonest on the deacon board. Uh, Y'all don't like me up in here. Uh, they dishonest, as dishonest as can be. Uh, and so in 1 Timothy, Two and three, the apostle described the nature of the people in the last days. In his description, he warned the people who were characterized of having a form of godliness, but they're not in his power. Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? Paul issues this command. Huh? Have nothing to do with people huh? that have a form of godliness, huh? but deny the power to be delivered. Huh? Paul said, have nothing to do with them. Huh? Now, I know some of y'all say that's pretty strong. Amen. Huh? But do you not know that a little leaven leavened the whole lump? Huh? Uh, glory to God. And one bad up on huh? will spoil the whole bunch. Amen. Huh? So Paul says, huh? have nothing to do with them. Huh? He said, of them such turn away a man uh, glory to God uh, and this wasn't the first time that Paul indicated this uh, when folks professing but not possessing uh, this is not the first time that Paul said disassociate yourself uh, we can go to 1 Corinthians uh, uh, glory to God uh, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself now uh, uh, glory to God uh, but the Bible let us know in 1 Corinthians uh, 15 33 and 34 uh, he said do not be deceived Huh? Do not be bamboozled or hookwink. Huh? Evil communication corrupt good manner. Huh? Awake to righteousness and sin not. Huh? For some have not the knowledge of God. Huh? And I speak this to their shame. Huh? And so Paul often used contrast. <clears throat> 
to emphasize an attitude. He wished to highlight a man. And so he gives Timothy a list of sinful behavior, an attitude that is contrary to God's word. And so when we look at Jeremiah, God was dealing with attitudes in behavior that was contrary to the nature of God and God's will, amen. And so in verse five, he tells Timothy to avoid those who state a man that they have been born again to avoid those that say they've been saved a man with their mouths a man and with their lips but the heart is far from them they have a form a form of godliness but who act as unbelievers they denying the power to be set free Jeremiah I spoke on this last Sunday Jeremiah asked the question and Jeremiah my 13th chapter in the 23rd verse he said can an Ethiopian change his skin and can a leopard change his spot then he asked another question then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil I want you to know there's some things I've done in my life before Jesus came into my life there were some things I did I did not want to do can I keep preaching up in here it was no longer I that was doing them. It was the sin that was still in me. Those hallelujah who have a form of godliness are those who make an outward display of their religion. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with little Shonda. There's nothing wrong with religion. But we need to understand what pure religion is. Thank your Holy Ghost. Because some folks have a form of godliness but they're denying the power power thereof. Huh? Can I keep preaching up in here? Huh? The Bible says in James, the first chapter, huh? that pure religion and undefiled before God huh? and the Father huh? is this to visit the fatherless huh? and the widows, amen, into their affliction huh? and to keep oneself unspotted huh? from the world, amen. Huh? The children of Israel and Judah huh? and Jeremiah days did not keep themselves unspotted from the world. Huh? They got over there and God told them when he brought them out of Egypt don't mingle with the other nation as you read through Ezra and Nehemiah you find that not only did they mingle with the other nations they started marrying other nations uh -huh. and they stole the heart from God can I keep preaching up in here I want you to know, amen, they present themselves as godly and they present themselves as holy, but all of that is just a show, amen. There is no power in their religion, amen. Oh, glory to God. There's no power in their religion as evidence in the fact that their life will unchange. you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus walks in, a new life will begin and you'll never ever be the same again. They speak of God and live in sin. You know we got folks in the church today they speak of God, amen and live in sin. Other words, my ancestors would say they speak with forked tongues. They got say, well, shunned them. They got something off come out the left side of the mouth and something totally different on the right side of the mouth and they are fine with that arrangement. Oh, glory to God. But Charles Elcott wrote, amen uh, these by claim the title of Christians uh, ran before me in the uniform of Christ uh, but by their lifestyle uh, are dishonoring uh, his holy name uh, I need to know today uh, are you dishonoring God's holy name uh, oh, glory to God uh, what hallelujah uh, can wash away my sins uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, what can make me whole again uh, there's nothing but the blood of Jesus. I want you to know today that the blood still works. I thank you, Lord. And so they were dishonoring God's holy name. And that was the gravest injury to the church faith today. These false Christians. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. the false preachers the false prophets the false teachers uh, deceivers of destruction amen uh, Paul warns uh, that they creep into <laughs> 
<coughs> they creep into houses unaware huh? and they make me a Shonda huh? and they make captains of gullible women huh? lay loaded down with their sin huh? led away with virus lust amen huh? that they are learning are always learning huh? and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth huh? he compares them huh, to the magic, a man musician, huh, the wicked musician that opposed Moses huh, and warned that the folly and the corrupt minds huh, will, re will be revealed eventually, man. Huh. And so when you go back to verses 8 and 9, huh, the names mentioned in 1 Timothy 3, 8 and 9 huh, are the musicians that stood before Moses huh, and cast their rod down as well. Huh. Uh, glory to God. Huh. Paul for the warns Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? Not only a man preacher will shun them huh? that we need to be careful huh? by association. Amen. Huh? Uh, glory to God. Huh? Not only in first Tim, second Timothy, huh? till he tell us not to have anything to do with them, huh? but also in first Corinthians 5 and 11. Huh? It said, be now I have written unto you huh? not to keep company if any man huh? that is called a brother huh? be a fornicator a covenant or an adulterer, a rattler or a drunkener, or an extortion, a man. He said, which such do not even eat with. Do not break no bread with them. They call themselves a brother. They call themselves a system. But double shun them. But Paul said they be fornicators. They be idolaters or rattlers, drunkards and extortioners. He said, don't even break bread with them. For what have I to do, a man? to judge them also that are without huh? do not you judge them that are within a man huh? but them that are out gone huh? God is going to judge himself huh? therefore put away among yourself huh? that brother or that sister huh? that say they're born again huh? and they're doing things contrary to God's word huh? Paul said put them away a man huh? from among you a man huh? other words he said don't have no association with them huh? do not associate with that brother huh? do not associate with that system huh? anyone that profess to be saved huh? and still practicing sexual immorality huh? greedy and idolaters huh? slanders of our brothers and sisters huh? drunkards and swindlers huh? he said do not eat with such people huh? because in that culture a man huh? as it is in our culture today huh? when people see you eating together huh? a man praise the Lord huh? the same as it was in that culture huh? it's in our culture today huh? it is somebody eating with you. It is implied a man that y'all must be friendship. There's some kind of partnership. Can I keep talking here? And so in some culture, a man, if a man eat at your table, we are bound to treat him as a friend or even as an acquaintance. And do you not know corrupt a communication? Glory to God. A man praise the Lord. Corrupt good man. Glory to God. And people may never know who you are, but you guilty by association. Huh? That's why I make sure, amen, huh, that when I hang out with brothers and sisters, huh, I want to know if they're honorable men or women of God. Huh? I can't get nobody to help me, huh? but again, amen. If we never ate with that person huh, or kept company with that person huh, before he or she sinned, huh, then nothing's wrong with it. Huh? But now <coughs> you have formed a relationship you eat and drink with them huh? oh, glory to God huh? and they know that there is a bond there huh? just like there was a bond between children of Israel and God huh? just like there was a bond there between Judah and God huh? and now God got Jeremiah to let them know huh? that y'all have soiled our relationship huh? y'all have tainted our relationship huh? and so just like a man huh? praise the Lord amen huh? minister Edwards and I, I huh? we eat and we socialize together Huh? and God forbid he does something huh? that is contrary to God's word huh? if I continue to eat and socialize with him huh? it's going to be assumed I'm doing the same thing huh? and so Paul said I want you to stop eating with them huh? don't even break bread with them huh? let them know a man huh? they not only severed their relationship with God huh? they have severed the relationship with you huh? because birds are the feather as they say huh? they flock together amen huh? can I keep preaching here amen 
amen. You got to understand, amen. People are looking for realness. They looking for genuine believers. And so in fact, it means just the opposite. In our culture, we may have to do even more than just eat our eating to show the world that we do not accept or condone that person behavior. Uh-huh. Or oh, their simple lifestyle. Uh, again, I want to tell you, uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, the real shock might come uh, if we made them part of a group before they sinned. Uh, but then now they have stepped away from God uh, and we separate them from that group. Uh, it's like a separation from God. Amen. Uh, I wouldn't know what I would do. Amen. Uh, if the brotherhood was associate, disassociate from me. Uh, we've been together 36, 37, 38 years. Uh, I don't know what I'll do if I lose that fellowship huh, with the brothers. Amen. Huh? I'm so glad. Huh? Oh, glory to God huh? that God loves us so much. Huh? He sent Jeremiah to illustrate huh? how we become unfruitful. Huh? He sent Jeremiah to illustrate huh? how if we're not careful, huh? we become dirty and marred. Huh? Oh, glory to God. Huh? Can I keep preaching here? Huh? Paul wants the Corinthian to know Amen. Praise the Lord. Huh? The fornication is not only acceptable. Amen. It's not acceptable by God. Huh? It's not only is it a sin that the church must not condone huh? or, or the church must condemn. Huh? It's not only the sin that might require church discipline. Huh? In this lesson that many congregations today need to hear, huh? we may be quick to withdraw from an openly amon, huh? unrepented adulterer, huh? but we just as quick as we are to withdraw from an openly unrepented adulterer. Now, we got to be quickly to withdraw from that brother or that system. Now, that life has become tainted. Huh? But one Baba Shonda, huh? but let me throw out a lifeline. Huh? Oh, glory to God. Huh? Galatians 6 and 1 says, huh? if a brother or a system huh, is overtaken in a fall, amen. Huh? Ye that are spiritual, huh? restore such a one huh? in the speak the spirit of meekness, huh? considering that could be you. Huh? Other words, when I'm saying amen. Huh? Out, you thrown out the lifeline huh? if that brother or sister refuse huh, to be real back in huh? and you throw out another lifeline huh? and that brother or sister refuse to be real back in huh? Paul said don't eat no bread with them huh? don't sit down and socialize with them huh? let them know huh? they have severed the relationship with God huh? can I keep teaching up in here huh? and so Paul huh? oh glory to God huh? he lists these six sins in verse 11 huh? Uh -huh, of the errors of behavior huh? sex money possession drinks amen huh? in the tongue amen huh? the church must be utterly distinctive huh? and our behavior to the world huh? because the world would not like nothing else huh? than to say I thought you were supposed to be saved huh? I thought you were supposed to be a Christian huh? the world cannot wait to say something like that huh? and so Paul said look here huh? let's learn huh? from Jeremiah huh? in this filthy girl them. If we get stained, amen, come on and throw out the lifeline. If any among you do not seek to remain distinctive in the area of the godliness, Paul command is clear. They must be put away from among ourselves. Glory to God. Because Paul understood that the world was watching, just like they was watching in Jeremiah days. The world is watching. Can I keep talking up in here? And so in 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, amen. It talks about do you, amen. Do we commend, amen, ourselves, amen, or need as some other epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendations from you. The Bible declares that you are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. And do you not know well by Shonda, the world may not never pick up the Bible, but they're reading you, amen. And so Paul said, look here, my my brothers and sisters, huh? we are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ. Huh? We are the written word of God. Huh? And when people read us, huh? I need to know what are they reading you? Huh? When people read you, huh? what are they reading to you? Huh? Can I keep preaching up in here? Huh? Oh, glory to God. Huh? Because the world, huh? the world is watching a man. Huh? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Huh? That's why we need to live huh? a peaceful life, a man, huh? among all 
all men, amen. To be a living, a living epistle means that you are living and breathing, walking the letter of God's word. Uh-huh, to God be glory. Today we are going to confess and affirm that our life and business are the living epistles of Jesus Christ. Your life and my life, your business is my business, should be a testament of God's glory in the life of the believer. Now, the world, like I said, love nothing more, amen, than to call a brother or a sister a hypocrite, amen. And like I said on last Sunday, somebody got the nerve to tell me they would come to church if there was no hypocrites in church. I told them if they become born again, there'll be one less hypocrite. Can I keep on preaching? Glory to God. But the world would love nothing more than to shout hypocrite at a believer. Uh, glory to God. Uh, the world assumes that uh, if the truth were known, uh, all Christians secretly uh, lead secret lives. Amen. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, my mama upbringing. Uh, mama told me when the street lights come on, uh, I better be in the yard or in the house. Uh, I'll be 59 this year. Uh, and I still believe when the street lights come on, uh, I need to be in the yard or in the house. I can't get nobody to help me. Huh? Uh, glory to God. Huh? I heard huh? I heard a young lady tell her daughter huh? the only thing that is open at the midnight huh? is I hop in legs. Huh? And so she said you better be in the house come midnight. Amen. Huh? Can I keep preaching up in hell? And so, amen, praise the Lord. Huh? The world assumes that if the truth were known, huh, that all Christians secretly lead life exactly like they do. Huh? The world hopes that we live just life, huh? and the world is constantly looking for evidence huh, that we live like they live. Huh? But <laughs> The Paul knew uh, that if a man the world saw no distinction uh, about the church uh, then no one would get saved. Uh, can I keep preaching up in here? Uh, and the same is true today. Uh, if no one see no distinction uh, between the life they used to live uh, and now the life you are living. Uh, they not coming to Jesus. Uh, but Jesus uh, bear the cross alone uh, and all the world go free. Uh, no uh, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for you and me the power the power of God should accompany a man not only godliness but erase the form of godliness it's shown that the spirit of God in the result of the transformation that's taken place in our life the Holy Ghost according to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 and dwells the believer and enables the believer to bear certain fruits, amen, like love, joy, peace, and happiness, kindness and meekness, amen, faithfulness and greatness, gentleness, and self-control, amen. These are the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit of God, and these are the attributes of every true believer, and the opposed, amen, to the sin that Paul lists. <coughs> we got to understand what's going on in Jeremiah. Jeremiah got to the point, God got to the point. He said, Jeremiah, I done sealed all I can stand. I can't stand no more. I love the people enough to illustrate where they are as spiritually. And do you not know God loves us enough to illustrate, to send a word, to let us know where we are as spiritually? Amen. We need to stop denying the power of God. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. And so the true faith is, will it be evidence, amen, by works, amen. Praise the Lord. And so James 2, 14 through 18, if a person say they are born again, but shows no evidence in their life, amen, by bearing the fruit of the spirit, we have to make a judgment about them and avoid them. That's what Paul is saying here. And so they may have a form of godliness, but they are denying God's power to deliver them. They are denying the power of God by not letting him, amen, control them and be controlled of their life. And so, in fact, if his faith is not genuine, he cannot be controlled by God's power. And if your faith is not genuine, you cannot be controlled by the power of God. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost does not dwell in unclean temples. Can I keep talking here? And so now the Bible says in Romans 8 and 9 that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, 
He is none of his. You can't, that one thing about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not going to shack up with the devil. Can I keep talking up in here? Amen. So if you're living a shacky life, a shacked up life, you need to get born again because the Holy Ghost is not going to shack up with the devil. Can I keep teaching here? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually Discern first Corinthians 2 and 14 the natural person may have a form of godliness But he denies God's power in the way of his life only faith in Jesus Christ can bring justification and Transformation so we desperately need a man praise the Lord and so the Baba Shanda if there is one thing that reveals a form of godliness It is the lack of spiritual power. I can't get nobody to help me. Do you not know? I couldn't keep myself saved Amen. And you can't keep yourself saved neither. That's why when Jesus left, before he left, he told the, the disciples to go tarry in Jerusalem until they be endowed with power. And I'm talking about the dunamis power, that power that helps you to walk right, the power that helps you to talk right, the power that helps you to live right. Jesus instructed the disciples to go and tarry in Jerusalem until they are endowed with power. Can I keep teaching here? And so you got to understand, amen, praise the Lord. We, amen, praise the Lord, got to understand there is no power to change life. It is power in God's word, not in custom, not in culture thing, but the power is in God's word. The power is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power is in the word of God. And so do you keep denying the power? To deny the power is to contradict or disavow or reject or renounce. Amen. And when we are living a godly life, we have a power and authority in our life. I need to know that when I got saved, I told I about Shonda, amen, I went to Minister Green, Pastor Green now, I got both Shonda because I was still having some struggles in my life. I can't get nobody to help me. I know y'all never been there. Amen. Praise the Lord. But amen, we are living Amen. When you are living a godly life, we have power and authority in our life and do that which is right in the sight of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so when we then discover we have power to forsake the description given in 2 Timothy 3, amen, we don't have to rely on a form of godliness. Can I keep talking here? Because we have biblical power. Someone say biblical power. We have biblical power through a separated lifestyle unto God. The word power is also dunamis. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, meaning, amen, and inherent power, amen. The capability of anything, the ability to perform things that we can't do of our natural self. We need the dunamis power. Can I keep talking here? The same power that he spoke of in Acts 1 and 8. And you shall receive power, not before, but after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You cannot have no power without the Holy Ghost. Look at your names and neighbor, you need the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And so the dunamis power, it has to do with the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Spirit in our life to make us active agents for God, amen, and to enable us to live a holy and separated life in this present world. There is power in living a separated lifestyle unto the glory of God. And so the scripture is clear when it says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You'll find that in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Uh huh. That amen. So that's that dunamis power. In the previous verse, Paul, amen, let the people know. I want you to know, amen. I want to know your power, not your words. Can I keep talking here? But what do you see again and again today, amen, among the Christianity? Words, words, and words that falls on death ear. And, and, and anybody educated, they can use some words. It doesn't produce anything, amen. They just speak in words. So a weak, powerless generation of cautious and passive Christian believers who still live in bondage. Amen. I refuse to live in bondage. The reason I drank and smoked and got high, I was living in bondage. I can't get nobody to help me now. Amen. And so blame shifter. We got blame shifter. It's not my fault. It's my parents' fault. Y'all know God said in Ezekiel 18, you cannot use that proverb anymore. My father had eaten sour grapes and my and the children's teeth are set on edge. You cannot use that as an excuse because my mama was this and that. That's why I'm this and that. Because my dad it was this and that. That's why. I'm, no, you can't use that proverb again. 
The soul that sinned, the Bible declares, shall die. Amen. And so the result is always powerlessness. We need a, to seriously ask ourselves, is there true spiritual power in my life? Uh-huh. And if not, then we need to come to the altar. We need to go to the altar until we, until we be endowed with power from a high. So did Jesus come to the world to pay the supreme sacrifice? And the price of redemption for mankind merely for it to be demonstrated as being powerless as a form of godliness? No. Jesus came to set the captive free. Amen. And so, as I close, there's much more, amen, than to, amen, just a coming here, amen, wear a three piece suit on with a tie on and a shirt on. No, there's more to it than that. Amen. There's much more than that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. He came to live inside of us. Jesus came to live inside of you. He came to live inside of me. He came to take over our life. I can't get nobody to help me. You got to understand, Jesus came to take over my life. I was a mess. I can't get nobody to help me. I was a complete mess. But thank God for Jesus. He came to take over my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. And G when Jesus lives within us and is our Lord of our life, we certainly do not have to betray the traits. Amen. Praise the Lord of our scriptures reference. Seventy five percent of fruitless believers. I don't want to be fruitless. No. And I, want, I don't want my fruit tainted. And so I don't want to have a form of godliness. Amen. Praise the Lord. A form of godliness allows a lifestyle that falls below the standards of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. A form of godliness allows us a lifestyle that falls below the standards of God and what the cross of Jesus Christ is all about. It is a deception, uh -huh. a band-aid that does not deliver what the people are led to believe. And so are you tired of the band-aid? Take the band-aid off. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The blood still works the blood the blood the blood of jesus it still works there's power in the blood amen father in the name of jesus we come before your throne of grace lord oh lord learning from the children of israel learning from judah as this girdle that jeremiah was wearing it represented how dirty and soiled their relationship had become with you and so God we want to take this illustration that Jeremiah did over 2,000 years and examine our own relationship with you have our relationship become soiled have our relationship with you become marred God if we ask him right now if it has we ask him that you wash us over again in the name of Jesus because we know if you wash Thank you for attending this awesome service. The women of Be Ye Holy Ministries are hosting our Breaking Free Revival, featuring Evangelist Frazier of Topeka, Kansas, from 24 June to 26 June at 7.30 p.m. nightly, culminating on 28 June at 11.30 a.m. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again and may God bless you.